and I'm going to live and we are live and first let me uh, stop screen sharing for first hello 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 welcome to Dev Kami 170 uh, oh, we don't have a banner I am oh, Tristan. We have banner. interesting the banner I don't know what happened anyway. okay uh, so either way Chilong is on leave uh, okay mm -hmm. So we are a very chill organization. You can take leave anytime because we don't pay you. So unlike most other YouTube channel, we don't have sponsor at the end. Yeah. So that's no. that. Yeah, we have unlimited leave. Yes. Policy. Ex mm -hmm. Except we also have day job. So that's that. So recently, if you notice in our channel, uh, in our uh, engineering room, uh, engineers.my slack channel uh, slack room so we actually talk about this device the seed Xiao Xiao is uh, because that is actually Mandarin because it's small so we are playing uh, so Xiao Xiao means uh, how do you pronounce it properly Xiao 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 yeah but without Xiao or Xiao yeah no Xiao, Xiao is and you want to pronounce it in the fanciful way in mm -hmm. the oratory uh, setting in normal mm -hmm. world, you call Xiao. Xiao. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it. And because it's, it's really actual, small. What, what the uh -huh. word small with the correct inflection should be? Like Xiao. It's called, it's, yeah. If you want to be fancy in the oratory, uh, in a fancy show or fancy speed, it's called mm -hmm. Xiao. But, but Xiao. again, mm -hmm. like many things, that sound mm -hmm. have context. Mm -hmm. Because Chinese is a language for context. That being said, I have an idea. Uh, so you, uh, you all know that I'm very interested in TensorFlow Lite on Tiny ML, uh, and and Tristan here also have ideas. So I'm going to start with mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so recently, I bought a stepping machine. A stepping machine. I'm using it. It's fun. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, what if I attach a microcontroller on it? And with the movement, by detecting the movement, I can use it as a game controller. Now, here's where, and how does the whole thing work, right? I want the NRF52 actually provide Bluetooth. It contains Bluetooth, uh, and there's libraries in all sorts of language uh, for you to use it as a Bluetooth keyboard. Bluetooth keyboard. Once you have Bluetooth keyboard, you can easily turn it into a game control. In fact, you don't need to use keyboard. You can, they actually have HID, meaning, okay, mm -hmm. uh, but the HID for some library is a bit limited. But once you have that, in theory, you can turn it into a game controller. And with this, you get where I'm going. So with this, I can game while I play, while I actually walk, which would be a very interesting experience, I suppose. So what's your idea, but Tristan? Uh -huh. But is that the only uh, idea that you have aside from that? Uh, actually, there's multiple. Actually, uh, another one uh, is uh, once we have this, this is actually small enough to be strapped on our arm. This mm -hmm. imagine something the size of our thumb. So I can use this as a okay, a, another variant of the game controller. But this time is for punching and all that fighting. So think uh, your V Sport uh, Kickboxing Edition. Uh, maybe for so I have a. Yeah, I, I was changing cameras because this one, this one, like the other one, it, mm -hmm. how do you say? It? Like this one doesn't have autofocus. I, I turned off autofocus. Right. So I'm going to the uh, webcam. I'm using it because now I can show you here. This is yep. this is not this, but it's yep. the same size, same same form factor, right? Correct. So Correct. this is the Seed Xiao um, A A M. What, what's this? A T Sandy okay, uh, forty eight. Yeah, this let me one, remove right. to show. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's roughly the same size, but uh, it's a bit bigger. So this one will no, work no, no, on no. the extension board. It's it's the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same pinout. The the this one is a bit larger inside, yeah. like it, it mm -hmm. like reaches to the end, but it's exactly the same layout. It's exactly the same pinout. Correct. Um, so I know the, the pinout is the same. same thing. But for some reason, mm -hmm. uh, this one is not compatible with their development board. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, it's an interesting. Yeah, because one. The, it's it's a different microcontroller. Like Correct. because the the SAMD twenty one, uh, SAM, yeah, is it the SAMD twenty one, right? Like yeah. you have particular pins for I squared C, for example, ah, or NSSPI. Ah, but yep. 
the yeah that this one you don't have you have the peripheral but you mm -hmm. don't have like specific pins for right, 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 right. you can move it right. anywhere else so i would say i think it's compatible but it you need to know that you have to set the like the pins there yep. um the thing is you only have one i think i have one peripheral for mm -hmm. spn i squared c i think the sam d21 has multiple i'm not sure mm -hmm. but you so that's that's why they wouldn't recommend using the same uh expansion right. board yeah you but would have to spend more work yeah but you'll see that 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 one is the same here so you can you can you can say that this is like the same size yep. and yes. you'll see that i've soldered in um i don't know if you can see it i soldered mm -hmm. in like a jst uh header for means... yeah yep. it's a jst header for yep. the uh for um, lithium ion bat batteries mm -hmm. because this one mm -hmm. and the um the shell like let me move my head yeah this yep. one and the ble had they have like their own um what they call this uh, JST connector. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, no. It, it, has, it, has, uh, it has VN basically on that. I uh, just ordered okay, okay. uh, uh, what they call it, a JST connector there. Uh, okay. It has a battery controller on this, right? Yep. So if you, if you put in like basically a lithium-ion battery, you can power it. So you can probably put it like this. You don't yep. even need the headers, let's say. You can yep. solder it directly into, into your PCB. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me just see if I can get something quickly so that I can show you this. So let's say you um, you plug it in like this, right? So directly mm -hmm. into a PCB, and then mm -hmm. it just like you just plug in. So maybe not like this, but like the other side. Then you plug in. Yeah. You you, um, you sticky tape the uh, the lithium ion here. Then you have your mm -hmm. your device, right? So it's it's yep. it's very how would you say it's small and it's very portable and it's mobile like yeah the, the power is basically there um mm -hmm. and because this is also a charge controller i think they're also they put in a charge controller for the battery right so yes it, they do it it can it can charge your lithium-ion battery as well so it does okay. not only receive power but you can so you can you can have like a, a, a y thing here where mm -hmm. so because it it will take uh, like uh maybe um a usb header like a usb female connector and it goes to the to to the charge controller and then this one goes out to the battery and then you can uh, like charge the battery there so it's a very useful device that's why i wanted to get some because they're just very easy so so this one has a usb c right you can plug yep. in usb c and then you can charge you can charge the lithium merit battery right. out there as well. And also, a tiny ML had a lot of very interesting opportunity as well. Uh, I'm going to show something else quickly. So the demo that they put here, uh, you have to right? remove my. Uh, oh, sorry. Have to remove my full screen thing. Yeah, let me remove solo view, and I'm going to add stream. So one of the demo that they provide is the microphone. So they have a mm -hmm. a simplified a simplified speech to text. A speech recognition algorithm it with uh with tiny ml i call it simplify because uh there's limit uh this thing is small so there's a limit of what you can recognize so in this case uh the demo here is like it's called xiao so it's like hello so they recognize one word and one sound which is the reason why you want to use neural network Oh, sorry. Well, I, I think it's because you do, you have a limited amount of memory, right? You have to Correct. like all of that vibrations, like the vibration data. You sample it, and depending on how often you sample the sound and yep. how long you want the sound is, that you're you're basically limited to the memory. Uh, you are right in memory, but less of a sound is more of. You're also right on that, but it's more of the size of the neural network. More thing to recognize, more feature more yeah. class uh, usually means uh more thing to store on the network in general so that's the main yeah. reason really but that and being said uh you uh if you go people already use it to recognize bird sound uh i do uh this team here is a bit more it's a bit more how i say it is a bit more ambitious in a way that they've tried to recognize a uh, quite a number of birds but 
Uh, if you recognize a general bird, I think it's in theory doable. And this thing is run on the BLE sense, which is interesting because it's also a. I believe this is a. Please don't switch screen. Okay, I'll try to get a spec for this. I believe this is a. This is a an F52 as well, right? Yeah, so, it's also the same. It's the 82540. Correct. Uh, it's 52840, sorry. 52840. So with this, with microphone, uh, we can have a lot of opportunity. Uh, for example, one another idea that I have, uh, I discovered the protocol, somebody documented a protocol for the uh, Sony Alpha cameras, which I have, uh, Bluetooth protocol. So in theory, if I spend time on it, it's theoretically possible for me to use this as a controller so that uh, I can use bird sound as a trigger. It won't be as accurate as a bird in front, but you know, I can try, right? I can try with some smartness to use it as a camera trigger to take photo of birds, for example. And I actually really want to try that uh, because there is a lot of little thing that we can try on this thing. Mm. So yeah. Well, I mean, uh -huh. it will take a trigger of the picture, but it doesn't mean that the bird is in front of the Correct. camera, right? Like Correct. It can but... be like behind and still going to take a picture. Correct, so but if we if we put if I put it behind a wall and all that, then it would be mm. more likely. Yeah. If you can control the space, then yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's where things get interesting. Uh, so there's a lot of things we can try with this. Uh, which is why I'm actually a bit happy about this. Uh, user interaction that's given. Uh, you can on Halloween you can use this as a head. Let's say you try to be Harry Potter. Then you can use. Do Harry Potter use gesture? Mm, I don't I know. Don't think I, so. I think the the mobile apps do, but they don't. They yeah. just like correct. Show the one. I think it's an yeah. incantation based spell system. Maybe maybe we can use the microphone for the one, right? For example. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the opportunity exists. So yeah, mm -hmm. but that's it. Enough of this. Let's talk events. Well, yeah, but but I I'm getting the three of the sense, uh, I and get... two of the nonsense. Correct. <laughs> two of the nonsense, yeah. Uh, you don't need the sense because in the way that your your interest is on Bluetooth connectivity, right? Yeah. For for two yeah. of them, yes, but three of them, I wanted the some of the controllers as well. Ah, uh, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Like the controls, like the, I think they have the, the BME pressure sensors, and they have yes. the accelerometers and they have yes. a temperature and a microphone let me so let me see I'm whether i can open it now i close it but yeah uh the sensor is packed enough for that it's cheap enough mm -hmm. with that said let's talk events uh we have nothing next week not not on this page uh we do have something next week in the way that uh it's international is this month is international uh is international women's day the month of International Women's Day, so we have more inter uh, we have more of the same team. So the first one is Women Who Code KL have an event on second April. Uh, okay, a bit further. Uh, but this is on Women Tech Leadership. So we have various people that actually lead teams from Grab, Microsoft, the local Microsoft, APEC Microsoft, and also Maxis. And also we have moderator Lisa, which actually. Uh, was our guest so you want to get your ticket and go there uh, it's an online event so because despite uh, the country is beginning to open up i think the organizers still prefer to do it online so not my call but if you're interested uh, remember to get your tickets on 2nd april then the second one is uh, this is the one that i want to show 31st march to 10 april there is a insurance hackathon with 100,000 ringgit of cash. Uh, the second to 10, uh, so the brief, uh, so the hacking itself on 2nd April, but on, uh, with, by next week, we will have like the pre hack briefing and, <clears throat> and the hackathon here is two type. There is a solution type and a cybersecurity type. So, mm. which is interesting, uh, which is interesting because uh, okay, hackathon. Even though hackathon used to be, the word hack uh, was uh, bef uh, was heavily used by the computer security community for a while. 
after uh, the Unix people, before that the Unix people, but now it goes back again. So it's a bit rare for a hackathon event to have capture the flag. Usually capture the flag is on a computer security event and they don't call it a hackathon, which is interesting. So by the way, they got a good sponsor, good partner. So it's possibly interesting. So, and also, uh, this is a good, I uh, if, okay, I have, I have my concern with hackathon as usual but uh but this is the insurance industry uh this is the insurance industry because so okay insurance industry is not really well known among our circle uh which circle uh our tech circle in a way that we are focused on technology and less of a business Whereas insurance mm -hmm. is heavily on the business and they are, they are very hungry for technology uh, because uh, they really want to able to build capacity to run their own service and being able to sell online, which will be very legal very soon, uh, is very helpful. So, oh, wait, you can't you can sell insurance online? There's a lot uh, of... I think, uh... I, I believe uh, at one time you have to do it through agents. Mm. Uh, I'll do direct sell. I I believe the keyword is not online. It's more like direct sell. Mm -hmm. I believe uh you can't do direct sell. I will validate again. I will validate that again. Uh, but for uh, which is why you notice that uh, for insurance they have to go through some third party and all that. Notice that. Mm. You don't see AIA yeah. have their own website that buy things, right? Mm. So. Uh, you can service that through web app, but you cannot sell. You don't see selling, but uh, the ability to put their business and serve the customer online is actually a strategic move that they really want to go in. And unfortunately, uh, the insurance uh, IT is mostly behind the scene work, meaning you have the actuarial people that use statistical tools and all that. Those are mm -hmm. very advanced, but those are not necessarily user facing type of problem. So I can imagine that I can imagine that this hackathon wanting to see this kind of thing, and also, despite my opinion on maybe some of the uh, some of the previous organizer of hackathon, this opportunity, if anything, the participant will at least have some exposure on how the insurance industry work, because mm -hmm. and it's an opportunity that deserves to be. Uh, we should try to go in, uh, even though it's again a traditional industry that we made a bit bored. So what do you think about mm -hmm. this? I I don't know. I don't know how fun it is to do an online hackathon. Yeah, For me, correct. hackathons are fun because you are there uh, 24 7 for three days. So that's the the fun for me. Correct. But, but for me uh, for me, my opinion of hackathon is uh, very few winners, uh, the rest are considered loser. But if you really go to the top, even though it's not technical. Uh, for example, this one, understand the business is still valuable for you, uh, for the for uh, the participant, and that to me is more important. But what is the what does it say? Why does it say that it says click here for to view recording? Like did they uh, already do it? Let so me you can let just me watch the recording. Oh yeah, it's already happened. Some of this already happening, already happened. Yeah, so I yeah, I think it's it's fine. So just watch it and yep, uh, you don't even need to attend the hackathon, right? Yeah, but if you yeah, if you manage to if you manage to network, I think that's fine as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's online. It's a bit hard to network, but if you manage to do it, I think it's a good idea. And yeah. finally, uh, this is also next week. Uh, in fact, it's on Dev Kami Day. I know because first April is a Friday. Thursday is my office day. Long story. Uh, another woman in tech event this time by Money Lion. Money Lion have been is recent uh, recently have been doing their own event. Uh, so yeah, uh, this again an uh, online event. Get your ticket. Uh, I will make sure I share all this event. I make sure I share all this event in at least engineers my room, so that people don't forget. Uh, if people that are interested can find it. So yeah, uh, it mostly all the people in Money Lion sharing their knowledge. So let's move on. We're done with you. I'm going to start from here. 
uh, Firefox has an identity unique identifier, meaning every time we download, uh, uh, those number uh, we do not I do not know how the number uh, ID is used, but it's relevant to telemetry. So, uh, with the ID on the browser, you can use it to actually uh, they actually use this to send telemetry uh, data uh, for them to actually know the user behavior. So it's tracking lah. Mm -hmm. So is to analyze download and installation if you are uh if your normal user probably don't think too much but this is if you really if you have concern about privacy this is uh this is an issue if you're concerned about it because they can track you and the opt-out mechanism is the telemetry opt-out meaning uh so it's unclear how many users opt out before the installation but yeah uh, this will happen now. So, anything to add on this? If not, I'm going to move no. on. No. Okay, this one. Uh, this one, uh, have you programmed DNS before? Not uh, DNS, but like I did but, bind, but I don't think that's uh, programming. DNS. Uh, I don't know what you okay. mean by DNS. Okay, so, uh, so when you configure bind, what you configure is a static file containing entries uh to and uh, continue entries to reference various entry of the dns record right mm -hmm. that's what bind does uh but you have another way to do that uh in the old days we have a thing called power dns now power dns uh is a java application uh what they do is uh, how people usually do this is uh instead of reading from text file power dns have connected to database databases so there are various plugins. One of the main plugin is database connector. So you can save database entry. No, you can save DNS entry on the database. And the reason why you want to do that is so that you can have a web-based management system that can save information. For example, uh you can you can okay, if you really want to, you can build a web application and sell people and set up your DNS. A bit crazy, but you can. But mm -hmm. it's more likely you use this uh, once you have database entry, then you can you can set up your co your query so that you can have like only people that pay can have record in our database. So traditionally, we have that mm -hmm. through Power DNS. Uh, in in my job in on app, uh, we go a bit fancier. We do we add some smart to do DNS routing so that mm -hmm. uh, we return you the closest IP because it's, it is a CDN after all. So this one is new. Uh, Bunny, Bunny.net primarily. I'm going to open another sheet. They primarily do CDN. They primarily do CDN. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, CDN is heavy on DNS, so they do DNS as well. So one of the thing they do is. Uh, now, uh, power DNS. Power DNS. Uh, traditionally, uh, uh you want to add smart suite. We have a thing called uh it's called a line connector so what they do is they send record query to a unix pipe it's a unix socket lock in a way mm -hmm. then we have a, we have a we have a script a program that written in any language to read from the pipe uh now with that mm -hmm. then you can write python code or c code or whatever code for you to process dns and return the right entry to to the dn uh to the dns client so Buddy DNS is doing something similar, but uh, it's not open source, it's their own product. It's their own mm -hmm. product. Uh, but the only thing that support is uh, the only thing that support is JavaScript. Which I don't mm -hmm. like, but I like the idea in a way that you give power to you give power to uh, the people to actually add some smart to DNS. Uh, so this one I do not believe is as as extensive as say power dns but uh you mm -hmm. give an opportunity to just grip their op operation for example so uh, you may do things like okay i have a blacklist that i do want people to redirect to that is something that you can do so mm -hmm. yeah i find this a bit interesting yeah. and and also uh just to add uh, power dns is discontinued as in the stop uh, the auto stop develop uh, currently, the only DNS that's open source that, uh, or at least user accessible version, is Core DNS. But Core DNS is programmable through GoLang. I do not know other languages for this. Mm -hmm. 
But that being said, it's understandable because not many people have to deal with this infrastructure directly. So able, uh, my ability, uh, my experience on it is actually a privilege. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? No. Cool. Then finally, iCloud had outage. Uh, I didn't and realize. I guess, I'm guess not I an Apple user, so mm -hmm. I do not know as well. Uh, apparently, it's pretty bad for well, Apple user. Uh, funny, I do not know whether there will be a there will be a post mortem, but we we'll see we we'll see in the future. Uh, this is more interesting. Okta, Okta is one of the biggest, one of the biggest third party, third party authentication authorization service provider. Uh, they are the one they will provide things like OR uh, user control and whatnot. Uh, so, as expected, this is the uh, you, ex you would expect them to be a bit more careful about their security. But this is what happened. Uh, a lot of people among our community uh, thinks that the marketing do not know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not handle it as well. So, but this is a big deal because this uh, this company had a lot of big customer. Uh, for identity management, so you're talking. But about usually, uh, usually companies with a lot of customers are the ones hit by hacking or cracking correct. attempts, right? Yes. Uh, you're larger, you're more easy to hit, or at least correct. you're you're in the in the the um, radar of these uh, criminals. Yes. So, which is why for some company, uh, you may not want to run this yourself because bigger, uh, the bigger you are, the more valuable you are the more work you have to actually defend your entry point to your application, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. So, which is why companies would actually hire, uh, get Okta to do it, uh, to do it for them with the theory that uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, so, there's SLA and all that. So, yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, I'm waiting for proper postmortem to come out. So far, there's a lot of marketing fluff, uh, so they do not give a lot of good answer. And it's a big mm -hmm. deal. So next well, one. Probably uh -huh. because they want to they want to reduce um, like legal exposure likely because whatever they say in public, it can be like referenced in court Correct. proceedings, right? Correct. And more importantly, the customer is also... I can imagine that some of the customer is reasonably traditional when it comes to incident handling so oh yeah but these are public statements right correct, uh, they, correct, they, correct. most likely these big companies always have like the account managers and they probably heard like more information from these account managers yeah so it, it's just us that don't have any relationship with okta or at least a large relationship that are correct. seeing it and so that's why it's not as adequate uh um, right but it, it yeah I'm, I'm sure that the ones that the people who are actually customers, they don't, uh, they don't just rely on public statements. They will actually correct. have a contact inside the company. Correct, correct. So next one, this is good news for some of us. Not necessarily good news because some of us are really broke. Serious answer. Uh, so what happened but, is, well, the thing is, do you need a new graphics card? I like, don't need it for now. Yes. I know I have game that can use it. So on my Linux box, I'm currently running on 1060 and I'm running Linux. I'm running uh, Proton for games, right? So mm -hmm. there is one game that is not really good on this setup, uh, Planet Zoo. I like the game, but I had to stop because my graphic mm -hmm. card cannot handle it. And I cannot play on my laptop because, uh, okay, so Planet Zoo actually simulate animals pretty detailed. So you're talking about high level uh, zoo view to individual animals uh, walking in the habitat. Mm -hmm. So the rendering is pretty heavy, can be pretty heavy at time. So yeah, I can use it. I don't need it, but I can use it. And also, uh, training uh, i have some advanced neural network that i want to train but it's a bit slow to train on this guy lah. so mm. yeah so my, most most likely just because if you're getting a 3050 for example right it's cheap yep. but it's the same performance as the 1060 or at least like 
coefficient most likely or just only a small bump so might as well just save up for or wait for the prices to be go even lower yes but this is like a, a better one so this is very this drop very low in a way that even the 3060 is already like 1.8k so 1. it's dropped 9, pretty yeah yeah 1.9 so it it's dropped like two times it's pretty drastic to be honest and well, it's some all, people what? it's this is what 400 by 2000 that's uh 20 percent yeah. yes right? but the bigger no, the the bigger drop the bigger drop the bigger drop is actually mm -hmm. at the 90 series and 80 series those are the one that will bigger drop so for example 30 80 drop for almost a thousand so this is the one you see a lot of big changes so but even that if you uh this is the official price if you go to look at lazada and all that a 30 60 used to be like three thousand ringgit mm -hmm. three thousand ringgit so i can I personally see that it's a big drop lah. So that being said, uh, for people that has delay their upgrade for a while, it's good news. But for many, because we delay upgrade our computer, so that's another big bunch of update upgrade because you can't just take a 3060 and replace it with a 10, 1060. I don't believe I can. Okay, it's probably possible, but I need to check the power usage. I need to make sure the power, uh, the, the power supply can handle it, etc. CPU have no issue. Uh, probably CB issue because you need to make sure that the bottleneck but i have doubt that bind will so yeah so yeah either way it's good news for some of us at least if you don't buy at least we know that price are go down pretty pretty well la. Mm. Uh, which also shows interesting trend in mining i do not know what yet let's wait for a few months and see maybe it goes up again Mm -hmm. maybe when uh we can finally travel without quarantines then yeah. it's a good day to buy a graphics card correct actually that will be next month because mm -hmm. oh i do not know whether we can go singapore without quarantine but on ground from singapore to malaysia you do not need quarantine mm -hmm. oh on uh, the ground but what about on uh, from out uh, overseas if you already do all the tests then you don't you don't even need over uh Within the bubble, uh, uh, within the bubble, I do not believe you need to quarantine anymore. And this first April, this on first April, there's a new oh, yeah, rule that tourists can now uh come in, right? You don't need correct. Like you can have a visa on arrival, for example. You don't have to get prior permission, or you don't need to get uh to have a like an employment visa or something. Correct. So correct. it's oh, you have more people incoming, but. Yeah that they, they still need to be vaccinated and they still need to quarantine oh okay so okay yeah that's that's it's still like that but it's still not cancelled basically quarantine is still the requirement is still there right uh okay this is a bit random in a way that is from o'reilly and this author uh this author is involved in cyber offensive in ukraine uh, a lot of interesting thing happening here so yeah it's about logging some all that and it, they're actually describing uh so as it turns out when you watch a movie about hackers you would thought that we can hack the missiles the nuclear bombs and all that not true you look at this uh they're talking about taking down websites uh, making sure that uh user cannot access information from websites uh leak uh leak information a uh, user information that happens to be on the server somewhere right uh then they have firmware update this is the closest one that you would get from you would get from movie but even that it just breaks satellite modem so it doesn't make the satellite modem explode for example mm -hmm. so uh this is on the ground security operation a complete cyber security operation so and it's about stealing files uh so it's not movie style so this more this more realistic uh which i find it interesting uh i mean it is a war but it just it just it just knock 
uh, not taking down a missile or submarine and all that. So, for example, they take down the bank uh, to get information. Then, yeah. Yeah. Just random stuff. Anything to, to add? If not, I'm going to move on. No. I think this tool is a bit Python specific, so I'm just going to go through it. Uh, there's some dead metrics in Python. They're going to remove it. Uh, it's actually not the first time they do that because I remember when I first used Python in 98, we had SSH connector and Telnet. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, this time they would choose other package to choose is red is actually a bit uh it's a bit obscure so for example uh cgi they're not using cgi anymore mm -hmm. so yeah that a lot of these are either uh it's either that the they have maintenance that is not active or it's a bit old so for example async async is weird may sound weird but uh, the reason is because we use another way to do asynchronous operation in python nowadays we use third party anyway then the crypt library is because it's too old then we have nntp like lib you would it is uh it's one of those things but there's no maintainer anymore so they will take it out audio same thing for example so as i say uh, they have that but it's a bit obscure oh telnet lib is still there interesting uh well, not but anymore. again yeah, no, uh, they would they would drop it in two, three version after this. Mm. It's one of those things that people uh, people don't use as much. And also uh, for some of the useful one, useful one, uh so what the uh what the uh there is show replacement for all this. So for example, uh CGI we're not doing that anymore, audio we we don't have all this anymore, but asynchronous we had or we had a thing i o this is the one that we actually use people use in production then mm -hmm. the cryptography we have various cryptographic library uh it's not consolidated it's not the same api but this is more maintained and crypt for cryptography is very important because this thing there's various vulnerability chain uh on the cryptographic system all the time so they are pointing to all these third party library again mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these are Okay, this one is interesting. Pipes are uh, Unix pipes, subprocess the same capability. So in short, uh, there's replacement. There's replacement for third party, so you don't have to put it in uh, your standard library anymore. In fact, standard library is actually hard to decide because once you have this, it's hard to take up. It's hard to maintain, and you do not maintain it all the time. So which is why uh, it's not as easy to say that all the JavaScript problem can be easily fixed by having a standard library. Uh, standard library is a commitment. Once you have this, once you take this, uh, you have to make sure it works. You have to really sure that, that, that uh, it doesn't cause security problem. You just effectively adopt them. And this is why, yeah, this is a hard thing to do. And mm -hmm. Python software foundation decide to just remove it. And finally, no, this is fine. I have two more. Uh, I'll try this dictionary, but using shared dictionary and whatnot. This is something that we're all familiar with. Uh, so we're going to. So this is actually a bottleneck, bottleneck on a startup. So in this case, uh, the kind of bottleneck at what level? So the first bottleneck is called tech depth so what does it mean here uh it's precisely what you say sometimes we when we write code we have uh we have compromise right mm -hmm. happens all the time we have no choice right uh so if we do too much it will that's a bottleneck uh then <clears throat> uh yeah uh so you have code quality testing and all that Unused feature or update. Da, da, da. How do you handle this? You Which have this. one? Uh, okay, let's say you. Uh, technical debt? Yeah, technical so debt. It, it, it becomes case to case. Like, it really depends okay. on like what what is required. Because, and so it's, uh, we usually practice agile methodology, right? And so you'll have right. like priorities. You list yep. them down, you have priorities, and um, 
it's up to the developers uh, estimates like if is this technical debt going to affect uh efficiency yeah right like will adding a feature become more uh like adding a feature now will it become very difficult to to do unless we refactor or can we just like do like fix all of these things first uh, like can we can we defer fixing all of these and then just add this uh very important feature according to like the stakeholders or according to the backlog so it becomes a very case-to-case basis right the, the important thing there is to convince uh like your stakeholders that sure we can uh continue adding features but if like just imagine that if you're a chef and your knife is not very sharp yeah if you don't uh if you don't take the time to sharpen the knife and uh get that get that fixed then Mm -hmm. no matter how um how much how much effort you put into making your dishes it's still not going to be very good like you're not going to be making like a lot of progress there so it's just a it's it's a negotiation at that point yeah because as you said i I have this little problem right here uh i don't agree with in their job uh i'm putting putting in general term on one hand on one hand we have component written in a language uh that only few developer would would uh would understand Mm -hmm. uh is that a debt or you would consider that uh the debt is here is not the code itself it's better that we need to train the rest of the developer or whatnot it really again it depends on on the the stakeholder right like if for example um it's very expensive to hire other developers other than javascript developers so that's like a budget thing then yeah you have to work with that that's that's how it is right Right. like we can't so let's say oh yes python developers are too expensive we'd rather hire javascript developers they're cheaper and uh, we have like continuity like we can we, we are assured to hire JavaScript developers in the near uh, in the next five years, rather than uh, hire like I don't know Elixir develop the developers or um, Rust developers, they're both expensive and they're very difficult to find, or they're like two, um, they're they're like what, forty year old people who are just there to um, to work nine to five and mm-hmm. without. And, and it's not it's not compatible with a startup culture for example so there are yep. many many different things right and so yeah it, that's why it depends on the priority yep. yeah but but the ground rules for me for tech depth is very simple as well uh a lot of these uh start doing tests that's the first one uh okay uh if you if you suddenly just take over project that may be to fix things immediately that's harder but if you can uh start doing tests and start doing what I call Boy Scout rule of software development. Uh, if you can, if something is very trivial to fix that you can do along the way, you should do along the way. I know some organizations do not like that. They will prefer to stick uh, with a strong plan. Uh, but I like I like Boy Scout rule in a way that the Boy Scout rule here means uh, keep the campground better than you left them. So in this case, I'm not saying that you should take another feature and overwrite your type that will extend your type. That's not what I'm saying. Why I'm saying that mm-hmm. you had a feature they had to deliver on top of a co- legacy code. Let's call this legacy code, right? Uh, if something that if something is easy to add or you have to do along the way anyway, you should do it, even though it's not within the scope. So, but certain thing is non-negotiable so for example you had a legacy code and you are in a position to make it better make it maintainable mm-hmm. uh the non-negotiable is uh at, at test there's non-negotiable uh if you have a, a beca- unless unless you have a tight deadline then maybe it's a negotiation as usual your negotiation but yeah. uh if you can you should really insist on co- adding tests for legacy code uh because it will usually it's a it's a given that before you can change something unless you have a full qa department that can do a regression for you right yeah Um, you need to know you need to confirm that whatever thing you replace is going to uh, still work i mean that's that's 
somewhat expected. Even the stakeholders will be expecting that if you replace something, things yeah. are still working exactly the same uh, as how they are. They won't accept like a process change suddenly yes. uh, and then retraining everyone else. So that's uh, somewhat a given. So either you have a QA perform the confirmation that th things have not changed, or you yes. write like automated tests and hopefully um, that helps you like with the, with the effort or the labor of uh, making sure that things are not changing. And yeah, and also test, even though I say that it had a very tight deadline, test is the easiest thing to sell because you're selling reliability, which is why it's easy to sell, it's easy to add in the, uh, in the organization way. I'm not saying the tests are easy to write. I'm saying that it's easy to agree to add tests in your, in your timeline. So do that. So even legacy code, uh, that is one of those two things you need to do. Add tests, add tests, mm -hmm. then whatever, everything. Then uh, clean up along the way if you can. It's not always easy, but yeah. So how do you get about the next uh, new funding, new product direction, uh, good governance culture, new opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And also you would have things like... Uh, uh, there's a slippery slope. Okay, so you need to set a quality bar. So that's why I'm saying you need to clean up along the way, uh, add tests, then if you can, on the higher level, more senior level, then set a quality in your... So this thing is something that you do in your code review. Uh, code review. Uh, or even better, if you can automate it, automate it. So, so for example, things like uh, linting, that should be automated if you can. Uh, mm -hmm. there's tools that will auto format things for you. There's no reason for you to code review that. But if you have, uh, what would you should code review is something like over complicated logic. Then you have to think deeper why this logic is so complicated. So this part of the oh, refactoring. Because the, I mean, the logic is complicated because there's business requirements are complicated. You don't if, put uh, you have to find out. Logic. You have to find out if this is really the case. If the business requirement is that way, then unfortunately you have to you have to let it go. But I mean, if it's uh, if it's legacy code, most likely, like people are happy that that's the that's how it works, right? Not necessary because uh, there is organization where there is organization where the developer uh, it's a nine to five type developer that just do get it done get it done uh do, uh quality is not necessarily part of the uh a mm -hmm. uh, certain organization to that you will see a lot of this in dilbert type of organization uh or or um an organization that traditionally small so you're talking about organization that have short-term output that accidentally have something that to maintain maintain long term mm -hmm. so uh so for example uh agency work for example right you may have only one mm -hmm. thing that you just for one customer then you can forget about it right then suddenly this thing is kept being reused but because the way the business work you just deliver one time and get it done so it's something that you accumulate because you don't have time for that as you accumulate you would add hacks that would at the complexity right so mm -hmm. that may happen happen so as a developer as you must actually find out if the business process is so complicated if it is then too bad you have to, then you have no choice right mix other than make sure that the documentation are clear the comments are clear uh if it's not uh if it's not then you have to simplify why something have to uh because there is such thing as a magpie developer oh this is a cool process let's do that uh without context right so mm -hmm. you have to make sure that if it is that case then you really have to raise that as an issue because not everything need that kind of complexity for example so next one is blast radius this is actually a bit new and not often we talk about um Mm -hmm. when you implement something uh when something break what uh what kind of effect you have for business so view you, you, your 
okay, what's the, for example, your payment module is uh, something with a high blast radius because if it doesn't work, then you can't get money, then you can't pay for things, etc., etc., oh. right? But that, I, I'm not sure that, can, can you bring it up again? I, I thought blast radius would be more like uh, if you change your, your sign-on, like if you have single sign-on and then you yep. change it, that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. actually a bigger blast radius because Correct. especially if others uh other systems are doing like if it's an ldap something right yeah correct. So, because like all of your microservices let's say are um using it to authenticate api requests based on, on the particular user so that that one i would say is a larger blast radius. because if even if your e-commerce system for example is down yep. the rest of the site is fine yes it's just people can't buy yeah, I would say that's a, a a more you and usually e-commerce systems are very siloed and very shielded. Yes, because yes. uh, you don't want things uh, like getting uh, spilling out, spilling over, or and Correct. spilling into as well. Yeah, Correct. But usually, when 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 I hear blast radius, I would think about like yeah, accounts, single sign-on, um, yep. database. If you're doing database SQL triggers, yes. that will be uh, a lot of things. Like if you're doing redoing. Uh, yeah, database indexing all of your yep. central systems. So, uh, so uh, the article will actually show at what phase you should do what. Uh, in early on, your course will be experimenting because you're not clear. You should set up some basic if you can. But at the end of the day, you need to have. Uh, in the end of the at the end of the service, you should actually have uh, formalism. So you need to set up your SLA quality. You need to audit. You need to audit your technical platform. You need to build. Uh, you need to create temporary team to fix technical debt, etc. Uh, there'll be more on this from from this because the uh Martin followed the contents. They have this as multiple, multiple, uh, multiple part. So we revisit, revisit this again when this update. That being said, the second one is called uh, hiring. Uh, so what kind of people you hire? So in early on, you hire people that you know. But once uh once you reach a level, you're talking about blah, blah, blah. Uh, you had to grow your team. Then you had to how okay. I try to understand this part, but it's about growing teams actually. A lot of these are growing team. So the, you need to actually uh, what kind of people hire? How to make sure that? Uh, how do you make sure that you, when you hire this person, you do it the correct thing? So, etc. So yeah. So in this case, how do you get our bottleneck? So the bottleneck here is uh, la la la. They don't show it well. La 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 la. Give me a moment. La, la, la. Usually it's the it's the bottom right. It's the conclusion. Or Correct. maybe they did. Yeah, there you go. So either way, the solution is just your technology as a differentiator. So in this case, uh, it's very simple. If you had a very cool JavaScript stack, then you should hire JavaScript. Then make sure that your JavaScript do properly is very cool that you get people coming in. So it's, in fact, it actually works well for the local Rails company. Uh, mm -hmm. lo uh, I noticed that it works well for that. It doesn't work well for the Python one because for some reason, because we don't set Python as a platform, we just we just build things, which is which I find interesting. But uh, the lock for the local company, the real uh, the company that use Rails do a good job at this. Interestingly, uh, the impact of the work. So this one you have to t sell that. Uh, what's the point of the business? If you just like yet another e-commerce site, probably not. But you have to give meaning. Then innovation technology. I already said that previously, you have to do something cool and whatnot. Which is why some of the uh, big tech firms spend a lot of time doing very cool stuff, like very cool database. Uh, a lot of it is to hire the best talents available. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not always an option for smaller companies, so you need to be careful about that. Effective environment, a, a lot of this about, uh, is about uh, baggages. So can you deliver on time all that? Uh, then uh, promoting technology. So in this case, uh, when you hire, you should hire people that talk. So when you, uh, 
you know the blog post that you share is part of this thing right part of this thing part of what's promoting mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure that, if it's promoting the technology though no but you're saying that our organization use this and this is how we do things mm. and if and if you and i believe you're doing a good job in a way that you're showing how to do things properly and what you discover this is what attract people so when people see mm -hmm. oh this is cool i would i would love to work okay i mean i would love to learn from this or this is a cool place uh with this interesting problem i would want to go so that's a point of hiring that, so which is why again i said this as now which is why uh the big tech companies spend time writing about microservices uh etsy's and all that so uh, when you share about the co code the tools that you use you're telling them we do it this way and we are cool okay we're not necessarily cool but we try right mm -hmm. and this is the cool thing that we do so yeah and then hire more t-shirt technologies in this case uh, you should hire uh you should hire somebody with multiple skills so yeah and not necessarily skill, but you get the idea mm -hmm. so utilize non-senior developers blah, 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 blah. uh is this about training uh embrace high working da, da, da. so again uh when you start then you hire from personal network as you have money uh use technology and all that uh then once you go on growth you start hiring leaders okay then you should hire your team based on capacity with goals and you would go beyond this is the part where you start hiring people from outside your circle that you know of Mm -hmm. then finally uh once you up once you're a bit stable then you would hire based on are uh, you hire locally so you you'll be open to things like remote working uh and you would spend time thinking about onboarding a bigger organization will have problem onboarding because your technology is in a in the earlier days you had a lot of mess so you really need to make it easy to onboard because which is why people spend a week or more to actually onboard the technology that you have because usually mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mess so yeah uh as i say uh button has scaled up uh i will share this link sometime in the future but yeah it's a cool thing and finally final finally github uh do their postmortem it's not full postmortem but they share what is happening in short their outage uh, right Yep, they had an outage and this is because resource contention on the MySQL cluster. So blah, blah, blah. So there's a load on the MySQL database cost causing the database uh, reach the maximum number of connection. As a result, are uh, this in all the right operation does not work. Uh so yeah, this is what really happening now that so they do not see a solution so the thing is this happened in multiple peaks which is actually what happened is uh this is what happens with loads because you don't usually get like consistent one load you usually get a peak because people uh stop a bit and try again and whatnot so and there is uh the incident is related to peak load combined with poor query performance or specific set of circumstance uh and the basket cluster is actually a classic primary request setup hybrid with one node for to accept right the rest of the node uh the rest of the node is read so they're able to recover by uh by moving to a healthy replica blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. they don't have a solution i don't see a solution but the best they show here is actually uh throttling that start throttling and no but that this is a good like log of what to do like how do correct. you how do you move like how do you resolve contention issues and yeah you move like you correct. identify the the bad server move to a replica so correct. that means you keep the service going while you're trying to isolate the bad uh Point. and then that also yes. like that also re reminds you that replicas are important like if you Correct. are
whoever's paying for your financial department let's say like why are we paying twice for this yes. server and that correct. thing is just like it says replica like correct can we just like not not just not make mistakes and just not uh, do something right so it, it it really depends yes so related to something similar that happened recently i try to see whether i can share more detail in the future uh mm -hmm. we had a we had a slow query that causing some failure in some operation so what happened that in this case uh postgresql had a thing called pg stat statement i said multiple time and from there we actually see that we actually see that we had this very slow query that as we look deeper then we realize uh, then we talk amongst senior then we realize that uh this query is not necessary we can simplify it we simplify it then then we found out that it's okay until there's multiple call. We didn't. Uh, we need to figure out that part. Uh, then after that, what we do is we once we know that once we know for sure once we know for sure that uh, it's that and it's okay to up a up another level of database instance. Then we just up another instance, which I think is really stupid in a way because uh, we up the instance. But sometimes that's the quickest fix. So you just up it and get it done now. But that being said, mm -hmm. we still need to optimize the hell out of query because something is calling uh, the same query too many times, uh, suspiciously too many times. So, but it's the same idea. It's the same idea. Uh, if you can, if you can, do not jump in and just up your level. It works, but how many level? You really need to sure, be sure that upping a level is effective. Upping the tier of database at the rds instance uh is but sometimes that's the first thing that you want to do just to correct well to buy you enough time right correct like if you're in the middle of like a buying session like because you open the cards and then everyone's uh hammering your your sql server and you know it this is uh like yeah you you're 90 percent sure this is because you have a contention issue like you have correct correct it, it was it was fine yesterday but now you have more like a, a thousand percent increase in traffic and so now it's correct. slower so you can buy yourself enough time it might not be the root cause but yeah it at least alleviates some of the issues correct. always remember always remember that always remember that just up uh you need to investigate the base level. You can't just say that I up the level is awesome. Everything is fine. Uh, sometimes it is, but you need to make sure first, uh, which is why a lot of these things have tools for you to investigate things, use it. So yeah, that's a cool adventure. I need to talk to the boss to see whether they can share it. That's a yeah. nice one. If you can, but you know, we also have other customers, so they may not be happy about it. Let's see, let's see. With that said, today is yet another news day. Uh, what's next week? I have no idea. Maybe another news day. Mm -hmm. Maybe just call it Dev Coming News and call it done. So that being said, uh, that being said, our traditional content is available in form of Dev Coming Shots. Tristan is doing something. Uh, it's not easy, but he's doing some. He's doing something. Uh, the next part of Dev coming for me is I might focus on something more software specific. I might share something on AWS. You know what? It would be cool if they give me credit for this. Hmm. Well, you Let's can always on. sign up with a new AWS. Uh, uh, it, it's cheap for it's cheap for me to have my run my own experiment uh, So in short, mm. so it's I can I can still afford to run my own experiment. But that being said, uh expect a few aws based technology uh things like uh system manager and whatnot uh expect some hardware hack uh because uh we still have those around we definitely have those around uh yeah and expect we i'm going to of course show things like all the security tools we talk about and of course database so expect more of those uh if we don't uh we we will do the shot, uh, but we probably going to repeat it on the main show. So yeah, with that said, thanks for listening. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Yep, and we're going to end broadcast.